Shiny lights and purple sky, everything so bright. 기다려 왔어 지금이야. Turn off your phone and off your mind. Look at you so bright. 멈출 수 없어 지금이야. Oh, I'll take you to the moon. Come on up and enjoy your ride. Oh, I'll take you to the moon. Just be ready to enjoy your night. Good evening and welcome to Be More Super Live. This is the first one of 2024. Dan, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. Oh. Yes, mate. Yes, it's going to be the year, the big year of uh, of Dan Fudge. I don't know why. I think I've said that now for the last <laughs> 43 years. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how that Do you know what? Out. We're going to talk about New Year's resolutions very, very soon with our special guest. Mm. And what a way to start 2024. If anyone has seen this horror mo movie, it's one of the best horror movies out there based on a true story which i'm astonished by anything based on a true story freaks me the hell out i've got to say um so yeah. we're going to get um into detail a bit more because apparently there's a lot more to this film than we realize and then obviously the 11th of sorry <clears throat> the 11th of january uh to paramount plus we've got season two of sky med um so season one did amazing on Paramount Plus and internationally on the 11th of January, we've got season two and what an awesome season it is. Um, but we've got our winners to a uh, winner to announce later for our prize from propstore.com, uh, which we're going to uh, get Natasha to actually um, uh, pick for us. Uh, so let's introduce our guest, Dan. Shall we do that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so this guest this year, I've got to say I'm really, really excited. What a way to start 2024. She's the star of SkyMed, The Possession, Nurses on NBC, so many other things. It's Natasha Callis. Natasha, oh, there we go. We've got you. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. What an honor to be your first guest of 2024. Wow. <sighs> 
Do you know I, what? You, Natasha, I, I tell you what, listen, I'm sorry, Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're going to have to have a talk about this because every time we get a guest on, it's somebody with Hollywood absolute stunning looks and I am well due in for another Botox appointment and it's just making me look like a foot right now. Um, so <laughs> if I start... If I start edging out a camera, it's because I don't want to be, you know, you know, there are some people in the world where you just don't want to stand next to them because it's not good for your self-esteem. That's, that's where you are for me, um, Natasha, like this. So listen, it's um, been great. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's like an episode of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I've got to say, but, but you know what? I'm really, really excited because Sky Med is one of my favorite shows. Um, and, and, you know, in the plethora of, of, of shows that are out now, it's difficult for a show to get out there and and to be seen and and compete and I've got to say SkyMed is one of those shows that literally shines so brightly. Uh, so if you can uh, tell the viewers and the listeners who you play and a bit about the show. Well, first of all, I appreciate all of those kind words. That's very very sweet. Um, so I play Haley Roberts. Uh, SkyMed is about a group of flight nurses and pilots flying air ambulances in the north. Um, and it's a very fun, adventurous, um, outdoorsy show full of young, budding love and love triangles and uh, sort of um, the relationships of coworkers and people who also all live together in a crew house in, um, in the remote north. So, yeah, it's a very it's a very fun, uh, very fun show. I mean, what attracted you to the role? Because you obviously you worked with, I think, the producers previously on nurses. Involved in, in nurses. Uh, they are the most amazing humans and ladies to work with. And so uh, it was kind of a no-brainer on that front, uh, knowing that I have you know such an incredible team of women um, behind me. Um, so that was the, the no-brainer. Um, in terms of the role and the character uh, and, and the show, it was what was so attractive was that it was all very outdoorsy and adventurous and we're shooting on a bunch of different locations in really beautiful places um, and telling a lot of you know important and relevant stories. So that was really attractive um, for me. And yeah, also my character was loosely based off of Julie's sister, um, who is a, or was a flight nurse um, for air ambulances. And that's actually how she met her her husband, who was a, a pilot. Um, and so that was all very interesting. And, and, and yeah, it was it was it was a no brainer. I mean, I've got to say SkyMed, when you watch it, it's like a, uh, a, a massive advertisement for Canada because it yeah. looks so beautiful and picturesque. Uh, but what was it like filming in those conditions? Because there's plenty of snow. You're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, is it as glamorous as or as beautiful as we see on screen? And what was the worst thing about filming in that location? It's definitely as beautiful. Uh, yeah, the locations are pretty remarkable. Um, in terms of like being a type of cl uh, climate, so we don't get a lot of snow. Um, and the coldest I've ever been in is like, you know, maybe, maybe minus 20, but that's like rare. So anyways, being in that type of cold was utterly shocking. Um, and also having to, you know, obviously act and you're not necessarily bundled up in, in, you know, you're in costume. So that was a huge challenge, uh, particularly in the first season because we were filming in Winnipeg, um, in the dead of winter. And I, I really haven't experienced cold like that before. And so truly acting was like very tight. It felt like my face was frozen. Like I, I truly couldn't like emote my like chapstick was freezing over my lips. Like it was the weirdest thing. So that was, uh, I think that was one of the biggest challenges for sure. But uh, season two, we filmed in North Bay, Ontario, which was stunning. And it's like a lake town. Um, and we were filming kind of a little bit later, some more into summer, which was really, really fun. And we got to, you know, um, film on the water and, and whatnot. So it was, it was really great. Do you feel that that wasn't an accident, given how cold you were on the first season? Did you think, uh, you know, do you reckon that they kind of went, oh, my God, let's go film somewhere warmer. We, we need this I'm now. We've earned this. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't much warmer, but I'm sure the adjustment in, like, you know, starting a month later, or no, I guess we started quite a bit later. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was because then cameras don't, like, equipment doesn't operate uh, properly um, during times like that. So, yeah, it, it was definitely a factor, I'm sure. <laughs> Wow. Well, wow. and, and we think an actor's job is all glamorous, red carpets, but no, it's minus 20. Um, 
freezing your face With off. Frozen chapsticks. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Sky Med for season one got to the number one spot on Para- Paramount Plus, which I thought was amazing and well deserved. Why do you think Sky Med did so well for season one? What was the magic sauce? I think there's a lot of, I mean, first of all, the characters all are so beautifully written and all have such heart to them that I think, you know, a lot of people can relate to them and there's a story for everyone and a character for everyone. And they're all very, um, just attractive human beings, both like physically, but also, um, emotionally. Um, so I think there's a character and a story for everyone. And I also think it's fun for the whole family. Like there's not really a, a specific age. I, I think that I would pinpoint on this show. Um, it it kind of caters to anyone and everyone. And it's also very fun and it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's also extremely entertaining and dramatic at the same time. I think there's so many um, attractive qualities to this show that um, yeah, can can speak to a lot of a lot of people. I mean, I've got to say, it's a great mix of humour, emotion. It's just fantastically written. It really, really is. And the one thing I like about this show is that there's no small characters. You know, it is definitely mm-hmm. an ensemble sort of cast. And all the stories and how they in, in, interwine, I just just think it's beautiful. It really, really is. Um, so obviously, Hayley um, went through a lot in season one. Her story arc mm-hmm. was incredible, and obviously not ruining it, ruining it for for everyone else. Season two, it gets a lot more interesting. So, when you got the script for season two, what was your first thought when you read it through? I mean, did you have a table read, or was it a case of you got the scripts at home and had a read through it, and then rang rang your friends up? Well, what's interesting is we don't get all, it's not all written. We don't get all nine episodes handed to us. We, we truly are finding out what's happening along the way. So we typically get a script uh, like one episode in advance. So as we're shooting, uh, we, we also block shoot. So we shoot two episodes at, at a time. And so as we're shooting those two episodes, we'll get the next script. And so that's all, it's fun because you're, you, you know, we're all dying to know what happens and we're like nerding out and reading this whole like, We'll be on set and we're like, oh my God, you know, episode 203 came out and we're like we're reading through. Um, so we sort of get like the broad strokes of what our character is going to go through um, on a one-on-one with with Julie, our incredible showrunner and, and creator and um, beforehand. So I did know, um, I did know what, ha- what journey Haley was going to go on and I immediately started, you know, having fun kind of developing um, what I was going to pull from and, you know, how I was going to make it, um, authentic uh but yeah in terms of like specific details and scripts and whatnot it's pretty last minute which is fun i'm glad you said that because you were talking about what to pull from i was gonna ask like if you're only finding it out as you go that must be difficult to try and get yourself in that headspace but if you already kind of know the arc to an extent then you you know you you've got something to to know where to go to but like you know so so like when you yeah, when you first started talking, I, I thought you were going to go down the route of there is a potential here to go all the way to Canada. You know, if a lot of people now live in L.A., don't they? And then, and then get to Canada and then film two episodes and then find out by episode three that you're getting killed off. And you'll be like, I have froze my ass off for all this time. And all of a sudden, I'd, I don't even go here anymore. What the hell? <laughs> is, is that a danger or do you kind of know, like? Well, fortunately, that's what a contract's for. So I'm very comfortable yeah, with yeah. where, you know, with the safety, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I mean, what's been your your favorite um, thing about Haley's story so far? Because you've you've played her now for for two se- se- seasons. A lot of pe- pe- people won't have seen se- season two except on CBC in Canada. I mean, but what's been your favorite thing about her uh, without spoiling anything for season two? Yeah, I think she's had to come to terms with a lot and really had to face a lot of her um, her trauma, which has been, you know, inspiring uh, to, to portray um, because I think there's a lot more than meets the eye with her and she's been through a lot and still carries a lot of the weight of her past and what she's been through um, on her shoulders and it's kind of just like always deep down there and there's been a couple times now that it's 
more than a couple times, I want to say, that it's kind of simmered um, to the surface, which is all part of the human experience. And I feel like, you know, we all go through things that we, you know, push down and then, and, you know, it comes up and we eventually inevitably have to deal with. And so that was a very um, inspiring and empowering thing to play with her and find with her. Um, and then what that looks like moving forward from her for her. Um, yeah, it all just felt very empowering. And, and, you know, I hope that I'm, you know, that this story is, you know, speaking to people and I'm able to help in some sort of way. Um, yeah. Mm. I mean, I absolutely love how Haley's grown over the seasons. I, I, I really do, and and I so look 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 forward to hearing what people think of season two. Uh, but for me, one of the most intense um, scenes was I think it was the last one that you filmed for se- season one, and it was mm. the one where you ended up on top of the patient because it was bleeding out. Uh, for me, literally, l- uh, edge of seat here at the back of my neck stand standing up and it was tiring to watch it was tiring it was emotional to watch I mean what was that like to film because it must have taken it out of you yeah I quite honestly thrive in moments like that those are my favorite types of scenes to film when I really just get to like go to a different place all all entirely like the adrenaline and the rush um that sort of pumps through you during scenes like that is pretty um fantastic so it was a lot of fun um and it was also pretty amazing it being the last scene because i i knew that i could just like put it all out there and completely collapse after and and you know just know that i'm and that i'm done um but it was pretty crazy. So also to what makes a scene like that challenging in the plane is that it's, we really, we call it like the toothpaste container. Like it's the smallest plane that we're filming in and they're able to, and it's in our studio. Um, it's also on a rig, a hydraulic rig that moves. And so it gives like a sense of turbulence and whatnot, which is fun. But, um, they take out the, the side paneling so that they're able to shoot in, but we're like, you know, um, pretty high up. On, mm. on the lift so something like that where I'm on on the gurney on top of him I'm like looking down to uh you know the floor that's however many feet down and there's cameras it's like there's there's so many things involved in and then there was like the blood rig where it exploded every oh yeah and then another thing was that I'm just like now remembering um it was like the carotid bleed so he had a a, a blood pump coming out the side of his his neck and um when they pushed a button it like blood was just like shooting out everywhere but because it's so something like that is so messy and like was supposed to get all over me and get everywhere like we really only had one take and so there were so many medical things and moments that i had to like hit and all of the dialogue and that like there was there was it was actually quite stressful because knowing that uh, you only have one shot of it, you know, because it's just going to be like such chaos and just impossible to clean up. That was an added pressure that, uh, yeah, that was, that was stressful. <laughs> does the, um, does the medical bits come naturally to you now? So, you know, you were talking before about, about, about playing a nurse and, and, and then moving on to SkyMed. Does, does the medical side of things now come a little bit natural? Like, you know, probably at the start, it was something you really had to think about. And then, you know, we're in the age of streaming now and being able to play things slower and, and it's not blinking your Mr. 80s TV where, you know, it came on at seven o'clock and if you didn't watch it, you didn't watch it. So, you know, there needs to be a focus on making sure that the um, that the movements are correct and the procedures are correct. D- does that come a little bit more natural to you or is it still a panic in here that, that you're going to get somebody on the internet going, well, that's not the right dressing for, uh, for something as, uh, as such as that, uh, that injury that that belly sporting? <laughs> no thankfully you know huge props to our onset um medical consultant steve he i have all my faith and trust in him that he's gonna set us up and you know make us all look like we we know what we're doing Uh, he's really he's really the best um and so yeah i feel like i am it's a little bit like dancing like i feel like there's i'm really good at just kind of doing it and not having to think too hard about it after he'll because you know we'll have medical kind of run-throughs before each scene 
um, and he'll say, okay, well, first we would do this because we're checking this and then we're going to hook up this and simultaneously we're going to be watching the monitor for this and then what that like, and so I can kind of just observe it. Um, and because I used to dance, I think I'm pretty good at like picking up choreography. And so it really is something that I can watch and just kind of do. Um, and I do think that is because, you know, um, I've had, I had nurse, two seasons of nurses, you know, in, in the past two. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, during your training, who, who took to it the best and, and who would you not trust with dressing a wound? Oh, <laughs> I mean, hmm. Spill the names, Natasha. We want to know everybody who's rubbish at it. That's what we want to know. We demand to know. I mean, I wouldn't trust any of the pilots with medical stuff, but I also wouldn't trust any of the nurses with pilot stuff. So I think that's a real safe answer. Um, I think balance. everyone. A good balance. Yeah, I think, I think everyone. You know, honestly, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like everyone is so great and pick up on things so well. And I think it's because we also have a team behind us that is so thorough and concise in teaching us and explaining things so well and making sure we all feel comfortable and that we can ask anything at any point. So we're really a good team. Yeah. Mm. I tell, I tell you what, there's a there's an element here that, that Brian and I have got super corporate jobs. And over the last 20 years, we've probably been on a first aid course. I don't know if you're the same, Brian, about a good 10 to 12 times nowadays, right? And then you know everything and you start going, oh, no, I'll do the recovery position. I'm really good at that. But there's an element now where if something happens, I know myself, I'd be like, I have just forgotten absolutely everything that that person has taught me over the well, last 20 years. Well, you saying that, Dan, now, you saying that, oh, just over a year ago, I had an old man have a heart attack, literally. Uh, and again, went... you just say that <laughs> and I've forgotten. I've forgotten what to do now. Literally, I went on autopilot, got the defib unit, put it, put it on him. I was in CPR. Uh, the defib unit using that for the very first time. It's a shocker. It's it. I, I can't yeah. explain it. Um, and the paramedics turned up. I was doing CPR for 15 minutes and I brought him around and literally, oh, look at that, you and see? then, and then I went for a break, then come back to work. <laughs> Of course you did, of course you did. Quick, quick smoke break and every, everybody's happy. But Natasha, yeah. there is an element now, though, that if you go walking with your pals into, like, the woods or something and one of them injures themselves in a certain way, they're going to be looking at you now because you've you've got the choreography in your mind and you might have the bits in a bag because you've seen how bad it could get. Like, you're going to be the first aid guy, first aid guy now in your group of friends, right? Um, if they were to look at me, they would be doomed. No, I, <laughs> I feel <laughs> like the biggest fraud. I wouldn't know how to, yeah, I'm not your girl. Um, I'm good at pretending like I know what I'm doing, but you know, I, let's just hope that nothing ever happens. By, by the sounds of it, by the sounds of it, you'll need Brian out with you. If you do go hiking with your friends, take Brian yeah. with you. He's bringing people back to life. Like. But, um, but obviously you do such a good job on screen because, you know, no one would realise that you wasn't very good off screen because on, on screen you make it all look so authentic and real. I mean, I want to do, talk about, obviously, your character has to deal with a lot of things in season one that we've seen and obviously in season two. How do you get into the mindset? What sort of research? Because obviously season one, we see a struggle like like throughout the season and we see that that grow. I mean, how do you get into that mindset? I mean, I mean, what sort of research? Because it's quite a, a tentative subject. And I think that everyone knows people that have gone through sim, sim, similar things. So to give it a bit of authenticity, I mean, what sort of things did you have to go through? Um, well, my I drew from, you know, an experience that was sort of close to home. My mom's best friend actually passed away from breast cancer. And, um, you know, and she had a young daughter. And so experiencing that firsthand was something that I, you know, I really held close to my heart while playing Haley and, and, you know, all of the sort of raw emotions that you see uh, with her throughout the season. Um, so I think, yeah, in terms of like research, I, I didn't 
do too much, but I, I was able to, you know, um, draw from, from that experience and, and hold that really close to my heart, um, while, while portraying her. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's one, of, it's one of those things that on screen, it's quite difficult to watch at times, but like I've always said, is that we need to see it. Uh, we need to keep it, you know, in the lime, 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 limelight because people might find a bit of solace from watching uh, something like like, like that, um, and 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 get support and ever and everything like, like like that. But it's performed so so well and so honest as well, which I quite like about the show. Uh, I don't know if that's the writing mm-hmm. or it's you, uh, but combined, it's just fantastic. It really, really is. Um, I mean, let's talk about the cast because the cast is full of characters, and you live together in season one. Uh, while you were filming. So uh, I, I'm sure there's plenty of stories that you can't mention on here uh, of what you lot got up to. Um, but did you all live together for season two? And 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 what was that like? Because, you know, did you get any work done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, season one, season one was definitely a hoot. Uh, we were all living in the same apartment building. Uh, and it really did feel like a college dorm experience where we would just like all leave our doors unlocked and people would just be like walking in and it would be like, okay, game night here and movie night here. And we'd all go out together. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And it was also really great because being an ensemble cast, it's so important that we all have, you know, chemistry on screen and therefore we all must get along off screen as well. And so um, all living together was, was I think essential in sort of the success in, you know, our on screen chemistry because we all truly did become best friends and and like a family. Um, And so that was really fun. And then come season two, because we had switched locations, there wasn't really the opportunity. Well, I shouldn't say that actually. Um, Yeah. The rest of the, Morgan and I lived in a house together, um, which, we were just like in a different point of our lives where we wanted, you know, a little bit more, uh, we wanted a little bit more of like a sanctuary and some quiet time and, um, uh, you know, just a little bit more wholesome. (laughs) So we rented an Airbnb, uh, uh, which was wonderful. And we played house and it was great. And I love her and she's one of the best friends. And then everyone else was, um, staying in a hotel together. So I'm sure that they had a similar experience to, um, the first season, but we were just, yeah, at a point in our lives where we just wanted a little bit more, more quiet. So we, yeah, we did our own So basically <laughs> you, you were the grown ups of the group and you just wanted yeah. to, yeah, yeah, to get away from the party animals. We, we know what you're saying. Um, so, <laughs> so um, how would you compare season two to season one for everyone looking to to watch it when it comes out on the 11th? Yeah, season two is is a lot of fun. And there's a lot of twists and turns that um, I think have a lot more weight on them because, you know, characters and storylines have already been established in the first season, which was incredible and super entertaining. But now you could just get to dive a little bit deeper in those storylines and in those characters with season two. And um, I think we definitely delivered on that. There was, it's fun watching it with my with my boyfriend and my friends um, back because, you know, getting to see their, because I don't, you know, say any spoilers or anything while I'm filming. I'm just like, I'm working and then I come home and we talk about other things on FaceTime. Um, and so getting to see their authentic reactions to some of the things that happened was was really fun. Um, and yeah, some new characters, which um, brings a lot of new flavors and, and new love triangles and relationships that maybe you don't see coming, uh, which was, was really fun. So yeah, I think all in all, there's just a lot more... Um, um, just like weight that gets thrown on on the second season of a show with characters already being established season two is definitely leveled up it honestly has literally the characters I'm so excited. and, I lo- I and lo- honestly you're a proper fan girl in by him i yeah, absolutely I am. love it. i am i love the show because because the thing is it's like in the uk we've got a show called Cas- casualty which is like a, a medical drama and it, it's basically like casualty c- cross between with maverick uh but Sky Med is so much more exciting on so many levels. I, genu- I, I genuinely thought you were about to slag casualty off there, Brian. I will take no casualty slander on this day. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? You, it, that is a British institution. I, d- I don't watch it and haven't done it in about 20 years, but I will take no casualty slander. But you probably get asked this a lot 
any news on season three? I don't know. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Because if I remember right, I think it was March last year that it got announced for season two, wasn't it? Um, Like the renewal. I wouldn't be able to say anything even if I did know. Let's put it that way. Oh, that's that's just me. That is just me. But, but Natasha, <laughs> Natasha, don't go away. Um, we're going to come back very, very shortly, like a minute and a half. Just be careful because your mic is still hot. So so when we come off screen for the minute and a half, we we can still hear you. We do have guests that literally start talking to oh. themselves when when they come off and it can be quite embarrassing we had, we had singing uh we had singing before christmas <laughs> it was beautiful <laughs> so so literally I mean, I will, I will not. it's okay give us one minute and we'll be back in a second Oh, so where you gone, Dan? <laughs> where you gone? Where I, you I've, I've dropped my pen and, and everything's fallen to shit I, I, honestly, oh. I well, you know what? This is a sponsor's message for PropStore.com. So uh, if you're after any screen use props or costume pieces from your favourite TV show or movie, PropStore.com is the place to go. They've got everything from every movie and TV show that you can think of that is being screen worn. And you, you stop it, Dan. Stop it. But it's my favourite bit. It's my yeah. favourite bit. If I wanted so, a discount, Brian, uh, if I wanted to go to Prop Store and I wanted a bit of a discount, you know, it's a bit of a tickle because I watch this show. What do you, what do you write in, Brian? What do you say, Brian? So basically, if you go onto the propstore.com site at the buy now, give the section, code. Tell them the code. Tell them the code. Do the code. It's Brian. Yeah. Come yeah. On. It's it's Brian Ten. If you put Brian Ten in, you get ten percent off your your basket so that could be a lot of money if you're buying something for a thousand pounds that is a hundred pounds off uh you love that dan yeah. do you know what i might get them to change it to dan 10 yeah what honestly i i absolutely adore it but if, if you change it then that's that's this part of the show absolutely ruined it's, it, it's exactly it's my favorite bit of you, exactly. you having to read out the term brian 10 that, that gets you 10 percent off i mean i mean who came up with that code was it ron seal it just does what it says on the tin it just it just is what it is brian 10 10 percent off so there you go right we'll go back to natasha uh natasha, natasha i don't suppose uh you can remember what that code was could you you know what i mean uh, you know if you wanted to get 10 percent off at the prop store did you uh did, 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 did you remember the code brian 10 see, brian Ten. No, see she knows she it's knows. easy to remember right it does the job so so yeah. for the month of december we've been running a competition for a, a, a production news screen used um storyboard from star wars that's been signed by robert watts and i've 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 randomly selected some uh some people from our U- youtube ch- ch- channel but natasha i just want you to give me a number between one and five and whoever that number is wins this storyboard that's worth 325 pounds which is a lot of money uh, that that will be sent to them directly from Prop Store. So, Natasha, give me a number, one to five. Number one. Number one. Come on. There we go. It's Finn Baylor. <laughs> Baylor? Is it Baylor? Baylor. Baylor. Finn, Finn Baylor. I, Finn I was Baylor. I was saying just before the show, uh, right? Brian went through some of the names that we had in the in the top five, and I was really looking forward to. I was hoping you were going to pick one of the one of the two, and this one I always think sounds like a character. Who who runs like somewhere that the Mandalorian has to go, you know, just to try and <laughs> retrieve something so he can get parts for his ship. Sounds like a Star Wars <laughs> character, doesn't it? Yeah, so so Finn, well, Finn, Finn, if you reach out to us directly on our Facebook page um, with proof of your YouTube channel, uh, your YouTube account, should I say, uh, and then we can get your name address. Um, if that isn't your name, it might be your name. It's a cool name if it is. Uh, and then we can get that shipped to you directly. Uh, hopefully they're not on the other side of the world because Prop Store would be quite mad. <laughs> can you imagine if they're in like... I know, Indonesia and they've got to send it all the way there yeah. uh, they're not going to be too pleased but I'm sure they will, they ship worldwide so Natasha I wanted to talk about the possession because it's one of my favourite movies and it's literally, it's frightening to think it's based on a true story and you did this film when you was quite young so I've got a few questions mm-hmm. about that as well um, so when you took on the role of, of M in this film did you realize it was a true store story and how much did you know at that age that you was getting yourself into 
Uh, I did know that, like, may I just say, it's loosely based on a true story. So I don't know if a little girl actually um, got possessed, but it, the story is based off of the um, Dipic box itself and um, the person, or the, the yeah, the, the guy who who bought it off of eBay and had, you know, crazy things happen to him in his life. So that's and there it's so it's based off of you know his book and 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 whatnot. Um, but yeah, I uh, I remember being, I remember my parents being sitting me down with my agent and and you know kind of talking to me about the sort of extremeness of the role and the character and um, and whatnot and asking me you know if this is something I really want to do and you know there's some mature themes and you know and I was like oh my god guys yeah like oh this is playtime like this sounds like so much fun like bring it on so. Yeah, I remember just being so excited. I mean, you've sort of by, by, bypassed at that age, starring in a Disney series and going straight for the uh, for the uh, for the proper proper role, which I think is fascinating. Um, and I saw in an interview that you did um, when the film was released that you said that the owner offered to bring the box to set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did, and I remember uh, Jeff and I being like absolutely not like let's not tempt <laughs> fate here. you know like <laughs> they just put me generous offer but we'll pass i mean <laughs> the thing that's always fascinated me with 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 kids in horror movies so you're filming this film and what we see as the end product is quite a scary disturbing film uh, mm-hmm. with lots of jump scares and and it's just visually just scary i mean as a child at that time, obviously you're very professional, very good at your job. I mean, how was it filming it opposed to what we see on at the end result, if you know what I mean? It's just it's just that I've I've got a 10, 10, 10 year old and I couldn't ever imagine her doing anything like what you did on screen. So I mean, mm-hmm. how scary was it? Did you realise you were doing some something that scary? Yeah, I did. Not while well, um the vibe on set was very light and very fun and I felt very supported and um, I had an incredible team of people behind me making sure that I was okay. Uh, And my parents are so supportive and my mom was on set with me every single day, you know, taking care of me and, and whatnot. So, and, and it is interesting being a child actor because you're still in school, um, and I was always in public school my whole life, and so you st- there's like a certain amount of hours that you need to get in a day of schooling on top of working. So really, you're going back and forth between tutoring and set all day, and so there's no kind of like downtime. Um, it's really just like set, tutoring, set, math exam, set, you know, algebra, whatever, um, which also plays a factor in taking you out of that um, heavy headspace. Um, so yeah, back then, I mean, I had no problem just hopping in and out of character, getting some candy on my way to school, and then filming an exorcism scene, like no big deal, um, which is pretty wild to think about. Yeah, I look at my my 10-year-old niece, uh, and I was like, oh my god, I'm, I was your age when I was, you know, doing this crazy thing and had this really big job and but I was kind of always a little like a like a mini adult my whole life I've always been just very uh professional and mature and I knew exactly yeah I was like a, a mini adult <laughs> I mean if you've got um, a fa- what yeah, sort go of uh, sorry sorry Brian the, the the transition did you say that from Disney show to to the possession it, it was it that way around let me just no, try no, and try no, and no. She wasn't in Disney. It was. I, 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 I was, was saying say. that so that kids, kids normally go into that sort of sort of roles, but she went and bypassed and went straight into like a De Niro level. Oh yeah, sort I, of, I was going to say. You know, I, I didn't have any of that on my notes. I was like, what, what have I missed there? <laughs> I don't, was that a conscious decision to get straight into a meaty role like that? But like you know, being being a child actor, as you say, you know, can be quite difficult. You know, we've got the we've got the chronicles of people like uh, like. Drew Barrymore and and um, uh, you know and, and uh, of that ilk and that era of how it can affect y- younger people trying to transition into being an, an adult actor and not in the way that some of the people out there might use that phrase. But you know, do you feel like do you feel like you 
are you comfortable with the way it went? Because you, given the way you had a, a conversation with your parents there, you must have a really good support bubble. And some of these other people didn't really have that. Do you feel like? Do you feel comfortable that you that you're in that good space? Yeah, I'm so I'm so grateful, and I don't take it for granted how supportive and pivotal my parents have been in, um, you know, getting to me to where I am today in my career. They were, you know, they made sure that I had a normal childhood. I remained in public school my whole life. I played mm-hmm. very high level soccer. Um, I still play soccer. I, you know, so so acting never became my whole, which I think. Um, is where a lot of child actors get in trouble is when you have nothing else going on and it, and it becomes this very like toxic and competitive and sort of crazy world because it's already like a pretty messed up industry so um you know my parents did a really good job of making sure that i didn't get too wrapped up in it and that i was always having fun um they always said because i begged them i like i always knew i wanted to be an actor i was like four years old and you know recreating movies and going to school dressed as different characters and so i actually had to and they saw this but they didn't want to put me into acting because they didn't want to ruin this like just kind of thing that i was having fun doing uh so i begged them when i was seven to help me become an actor and they're like okay well we don't know what we're doing either so we'll try to do this together but if at any point this becomes not not fun anymore you don't have to do it and uh i basically booked my first movie ever which was a lead in a, in a christmas movie and um it, the rest is history i just absolutely fell in love with it and i knew that it's what i wanted to do for the rest of my life so i yeah i don't take i don't take for granted the fact that my parents were absolutely um pivotal and all of that and i'm, I'm very very lucky to have such an incredible that, that, honestly it, it, it's something mm. like that, 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 that you know that's really really great to hear because i know you know that we there are millions of tales of of uh of child stars that haven't really enjoyed this you know a great life because of the support bubble around them but you did mention there yeah. that you played soccer i want to know what position you play and do you have a favorite team Oh, okay. So I, oh, I, I don't have a favorite team. I don't follow soccer. So I, well, actually, okay. I am Wrexham. <laughs> I'm watching the Wrexham. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Well, I, t- I, t- I tell you what, Natasha, I, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out here to you now, and I'm going to introduce you to a team that you've probably not heard of. This, this, this here is uh, Sheffield Wednesday. They play in the in the north of England. Uh, they are in the second tier, uh, third from bottom now, um, because they, they they were terrible. And now we've got a lovely, sexy German manager who's now changing some uh, changing some bits around in Sheffield Wednesday. So if you do want to pick a team, uh, I'm going to put a big a big flag in this one. And uh, yes, tell me what position you played because that intrigues me. I grew up playing um, midfielder outside mid, and yeah. then I now play, I now play striker. Oh wow! Doing all the big, all the big jobs there. I, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. six foot three. I just, I just shouted my own name and headed it back where it came from. But you're doing the bits where you've yeah. got to actually be able to play the ball with your feet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, it's a great sport. To be honest, you've lost, lost me. I've got a clue with football. Is, 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 is Wrexham above Sheffield Wednesday? In, in, in the uh, not yet, no. But given given about three seasons with you know with the with the millions that Ryan and Rob have got, then uh, you know <laughs> I, I, there's there's going to be a Sheffield Wednesday Wrexham game coming in at some point, and uh, I'm trying to get tickets for it will be an absolute bloody nightmare. Well, I'm. Have you guys off... watched Sorry? the documentary? Sorry, have you watched the Wrexham mm-hmm. documentary? Yeah, yeah, it's great. I, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, We're I'm got... watching it. Right I go to an event that's literally right next door to that state sta- stadium uh, at the Wrexham University. So I'm off there in April uh, to an event, and and it's really bizarre that he's bought that team out of all the teams that he could have bought. Uh, it's just really, really bizarre. But he's doing such a great job for the locals, for everyone around him, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. I just really, really think is fan- fantastic. But I just wanted to ask you: Have you got a favourite scene in the possession? Because um, you know, there are so many scenes that I like, but have you got a favourite scene that, that gives you fond memories, if that's the right thing to say, because it's a possession movie. <laughs> it's not really, <laughs> you know, happy. <laughs> yeah, what's your fondest possession moment? What's, what's your best yeah. bit about... What's your best possession? What's, <laughs> okay, well, there's so many stories and favourite scenes for different reasons. Um I think I remember, so there's a scene where I'm outside and, and the, um, 
Dybbuk is, you know, coming out of the box. It's in, we're in the parking lot and it's nighttime and then there's like moths and it's like mm. that whole scene. So what was really interesting about that scene and filming it was that there was, a, it was a whole scripted scene. And so I like, I memorized the lines and there was real lines. And, but then I got to set on the day and the director was like, okay, I just want you to throw away the pages. We're not going to use those words. He's like, I'm going to put a bug in your ear and I'm going to have a microphone beside the camera and I'm going to turn off the sound for everyone. Like nobody's allowed to listen to our, to our conversation. And I just want to like film this convert. Like, he's like, I'm just going to prompt you. I'm going to going to be in your ear and just like, trust me. And so I remember that being like incredible. Um, and such like that whole movie for me was just such an incredible learning experience and I feel like it paved my um paved the way for me and like my career and and like developing my craft and he gave me so many tools and there were so many things where and it's interesting too like fear is just not present in in a mm. child so like looking back at all of these things that I did as a kid actor was just like no fear present no imposter syndrome none of that bullshit like it's just like okay let's go for it let's have fun doing it and now i'm like oh my god if i had shown up on like you know starring in a big lionsgate multi-million dollar movie and they're like okay throw away your lines and we're just gonna like do i would be like you know <laughs> <laughs> losing you know super scared i'm trying not to swear i'm sorry um and so yeah. Anyway, so that was really interesting to to film, and um, and that yeah. So that that's a stand up. And what was Jeffrey Dean Morgan like? Because because that's my yeah. Wife. How does he smell? How does Jeffrey Dean Morgan that's just weird, smell? Dan, it's um, the most important question that I've written in capital letters on my notes this evening. Does he smell how like does he smell? Uh, bread? Yep. He smells like cigarettes, probably. I can't remember. He's the most one. Oh my God. I have such like uh, a special place in my heart for Jeff and I always will. He was such a wonderful human and like just completely took me under his wing and we would text, we stayed in touch for years after and he was like a father figure to me and I would talk to him about all my crushes at school and we had a swear jar and I made millions of dollars off of him on that show, uh, on the way we went from the swear jar. He would just empty his pockets at the end of the night. Um, oh my God, he was the best. He's hilarious. He was, yeah, he was incredible. And then I actually ended up doing an episode of Supernatural um, years and years later, and uh, I was with um, Jensen and Jared, and you know all of them. And I was like, "We share a dad," and they're like, "No way!" And I was like, "Yeah, we have to. We have. Let's all flip off the camera and send it to Jeff." Like I was just like stone faced, like let's all just flip flip off the camera. And so we all did that, and then Jeff just immediately sends a photo of him flipping all of us off. And <laughs> he's just yeah. Adorable. Do you know what? Do you know what? Jeff is the one person that when he's on screen my wife doesn't say anything she just she <laughs> yeah. comes off her phone and she just stares at the screen so you know I just cannot compete I really can't um but no I, I you know what Natasha thank you so much for com coming on I wanted to mention your Instagram so if anyone is not following Natasha yet uh you can follow Natasha there on in Instagram if you go on it you will see that you've been going on a worldwide trip. Uh, I've got to say, uh, some lovely photos. Um, favorite place that you went to? Oh, Cascai in Portugal. Favorite place. It was so beautiful. All of Portugal was um, just blew my mind, and I can't wait to visit again. But um, Cascai was a really special place. And, fa and favorite place in the world that you've been to? in the whole world um mm. I, um i would have to say brazil has a really special place in my heart because i went there a few times as a kid um because my dear family friends uh, lived there and so yeah I, I think brazil um has a, has a really special place in my heart but i i haven't traveled much of europe actually this was my first europe trip this summer was um portugal and spain so i look forward to i can't wait to come to the uk i'm so excited to <laughs> sheffield don't, I really come to sh don't come to sheffield yeah. it, it is like come, the roughest place honestly it's where, they, it's where they filmed the full monty so it's it's obviously world famous so you're gonna have to come to sheffield just to see how shit it is if i'm honest you know what I mean? sean, <laughs> bean. sean bean is from sheffield so sean, sean bean, bean yep. big actor 
he's from Sheffield. Um, okay. So, but yeah, but, but do you know what? Everyone watching, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe. Uh, we've got some great guests coming up. Uh, but what a way to start 2024 on the 11th of January internationally on Paramount Plus. We've got Sky Med season two. And I'm sure that as soon as we find out, we're going to let everyone know season three. It's on its way because there is nothing better than than enjoying a sea season and then knowing that you've got something to look forward to. You know, them stories growing and I cannot wait to see where Haley goes uh, on a journey. I really, I really can't. But Natasha, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We're going to end the stream uh, and, and join us next next week with Megan Peter uh, Hill. Uh, who's going to be uh, with us, our live guest, next week. So keep safe and stay super. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm.